Now let's go to pillar number two, which is increasing commissions. Okay. Who here wants to make more money on every single deal they close? Is it just me or would you like to do so as well? Okay, cool. Awesome. I didn't think so. So let's talk about increasing commission. Now, what's interesting is the average commission percentage is equal to the better the deals you do and double ending more deals. So let's explain how this works. If you want to increase your commissions, you're going to have to focus on the following five things. Number one, learn how to find better and off market opportunities. Because if you're not reliant, uh, it, sorry, if you are reliant, which you're going to see here in number three in a second, if you're reliant on what's on the market, you, are you really in control of doing more business? If you're just reliant on what comes on the MLS or what comes on a CoStar or what comes on listed on LoopNet, are you actually in control of your destiny of closing deals? No, you're not. So you have to find and become masterful at finding off-market opportunities. Number two, you need to become a master negotiator because the better the deal you can negotiate, the higher likelihood it is for you to earn higher commission checks, right? Am I the only one who's ever earned maybe a 1% commission on a, on a deal before? Have you guys earned 1% commission on a deal? The reason why you may have only earned one or 2% commission on a deal is because that deal was only good enough for a buyer to pay so much on the property. So what happens is when the deal is better, when you've negotiated a better deal, okay, what happens is the buyer's willing to pay more money for it. Shocker, right? So the better the deal you can negotiate, the more money the buyer is willing to pay. Number three, avoiding on-market properties. You know why? Because there's a listing agent who controls your commissions. There is a listing agent who actually tells you how much money you're, you can make on this deal. Isn't that crazy? That someone actually can tell you how much money you're, you are able to make on a deal. I'm sorry, I want to be in more control of my destiny than relying on some random broker saying, you know what, we're only taking a 3% commission on this deal and you're only going to make 1%. Why on planet earth would I try so hard if I'm only going to make 1%? Doesn't sound exciting to me. Number four is be direct to seller and be direct to buyer. This is very similar to number three, but it's slightly different because there's so many people who go, oh, well, this broker sent me this deal and he wants me to try to help him find something. If you have a buyer, maybe we can do some business. So that means you're not direct to seller and you're not direct to buyer. How much money do you think you're going to make if you're just the middleman? You're going to become, you're going to get a split of a split, which no one likes to make. So I'm telling you, you need to become direct to seller and direct to buyer. And number five, which I see so many people falling, um, you know, or failing to do so, which is just asking for a higher commission, which is if you're doing a deal and you've negotiated a good deal and it's off market, you're direct to buyer and you're direct to seller, you have the ability to say, hey, I'm submitting this offer with a 6% commission on it. And the seller can then give you feedback. It's okay, but ask for the 6%, ask for at least 5% commission if the deal is good enough and allow the seller to give you feedback. In, some, in a lot of the cases with all my teams and all the deals I've done, they just allow you to do it because all they're paying attention to is their net number. And if you can net them what they want, they really don't care what you make. Now let's focus on number three, which is increasing the repurchase rate for clients. You want to deal with clients who are repurchasing frequently. Who here wants to do business with people who buy like five or 10 deals a year versus people who buy like one deal or less, right? I would think so. Me too. And look, what's remember this line, more active investors, right? The more active they are as investors, the more active your income is, right? I know it sounds simple, but that's the truth. And so many of us focus on investors who maybe only buy one deal or less per year. So let's talk about exactly how you can target these individuals. It's all about the pre-qualification because as you're prospecting for sellers, we talked about the pivot strategy, right? When you say, hey, would you be totally against selling your property? And they say, no, I'm not interested in selling my property. What could you then do? I hope you're thinking about pivoting into, would you be totally against buying another property like your property at 123 Main Street? It's a very simple pivot. And when you use that actively, you're slowly but surely building up your buyer list and you're getting all this criteria. And then what we like to do is you like to do a two-fold pre-qual. What that allows us to do is when we have a full-blown conversation with them where we try to schedule a 15-minute call just to get a better understanding of exactly what they're looking for, one of the questions that we ask is saying, it's highlighted in purple here, how many properties did you buy last year? Because if they say zero, what's the likelihood of them buying a property this year? Pretty low. And then another question is, what is your goal to buy this year? What is your goal? How many properties are you looking to purchase this year? So many of us don't ask these questions and we go, oh, they bought 10 properties this year. So they're going to buy 10 properties this year. You cannot assume because sometimes things have changed within their circumstances of their company. So it's, it's, it's important to take these two questions and make sure you ask every single buyer so you can get a specific idea of what they're looking for. And here's the interesting thing. Even if you have somebody who buys, let's say 10 properties a year, if you have somebody who buys 10 properties a year, what's interesting is 
you're not going to get all 10 of their properties every year. You, they're probably going to be working with multiple brokers. If they're a very seasoned investor, you're going to get a percentage of the deals that they close. And if you get a percentage of the 10 deals they close, you might get one, two, three, five, maybe eight of those deals, but you're not going to get all 10, right? So if you have somebody who's only going to buy maybe one or two deals a year, how many properties do you actually think you're going to close with that person? So it's important to realize that you probably need a little bit more of a seasoned pro that you're working with or higher quality investors who are buying a lot more properties more frequently. And all it takes is asking a few more extra questions in the pre-qualification.